At Clayton Savannah, we design and construct each home with strength and durability. So let's take a look at what the roof of a Clayton-built manufactured home consists of and how it's built. Roof construction of a Clayton-built manufactured home starts inside a climate-controlled home building facility with trained home builders assembling a complex truss system to provide a secure foundation for the rest of the home. What you're looking at here is our laminated bridge beam. If you don't know what that is, don't feel too badly. You've got a lot of company. And in your defense, how could you know if no one ever told you? What we're talking about is a point within the marriage wall of a multi-section home that helps support the roof. If this home has a large span going from one side of the home to the other through the marriage wall, then the roof must be supported by a beam along the ridge of the roof. Obviously, since there's no wall, a strong beam has to be engineered that will not allow the roof to sag in the area of the open room. This beam is also to be supported by structures within the, within the wall called the ridge beam support column. There are generally three or more studs connected together that are found on each end of the open span at the marriage wall. The ridge beam is like a bridge and these column supports support the ends of the bridge. They transmit the weight of the structure plus the roof load through to the foundation beneath. The weight this two by 12 column is designed to hold could be three times or more the weight found on a pier under the I-beam. The length of the ridge beam determines how much load each one of these built-in supports has to carry. Consequently, not all homes will have the same load to bear. If you have 10,000 to 18,000 pounds of weight within a home that is unsupported, you're eventually gonna have a problem because gravity always wins. Hence the need for our 2x12 laminated ridge beam that is uh, located at each of our spans on all marriage lines. In the last part of the previous segment, you saw the backbone of the roof that we install here at Clayton Savannah to keep all the roof trusses in place. Here you can also see the 2x4 outlooker that supports the overhang during strong winds. Pictured here is our gold bond half inch ceiling board. And as you can see, it is fire resistant gypsum board. In this step of the home building process, a weather strip is installed after the wall has been constructed and set and before the roof is set on top of the walls. This strip creates a seal to keep the outside elements outside and keep your inside elements inside. As you can see here, this double-sided adhesive weather strip is run out all exterior walls. Once the roof truss system is completed, the home roof structure is moved over the rest of the home. The truss system is joined to the exterior walls for stringent building requirements and fastened to the interior walls with screws. How the sections are secured together will vary slightly depending on the construction package. Finally, strapping with metal bands is used to connect the other components together. Each of these materials help maintain the structural integrity of your roof so that the home lasts a lifetime. Here is a great look of the guts of the roof before the insulation is blown in. As you can see, all the wiring is run for the can lights, ceiling fans, and any overhead light fixtures that, that may be in the home there. Here's also a great look at the backbone. The backbone is a savannah standard that keeps the roof together during the construction process and provides support during transport. After the roof is in place, the truss system and roof cavity are filled with formaldehyde-free, high-quality insulation to help you save money on energy costs. Then it's covered with 7 16 
roof decking, a waterproof barrier, and 20-year Tamco asphalt shingles. As far as the roof ventilation system and how the roof will perform after it's been installed, each of our roofs are designed to meet stringent federal building codes. Each ventilation system is built for a specific amount of intake and exhaust determined by the square footage of the home. Pictured here, you can see the installation of our Simpson tie-down straps, otherwise known as hurricane straps. There's one place at the floor as well as at the roof and are designed for our wind zone two and three areas. Here's an up-close look of the eight sheeting clips that we use for our roof decking for, to allow for expansion and contraction and also keeps the roof decking locked in place during transport set and then also provide a security over the life of the home to keep it from moving around. All right, we're on top of the plant here after hours. I wanted to give you a look that a lot of people don't see on a house. Of course, everybody knows we have overhangs on our single wides and double wide standard, but you don't see really what goes behind that. So here you can see the two by fours run here. And then we also have all the support that goes down and supports the overhang on the vented eaves here. Don't forget that's the Savannah standard here. And you can see if you look down the, the middle of the rafters here, we have a two by four that's connected to all of them to keep that house together over time during transport. And that way it keeps all those roof trusses good and sturdy there. So here you can see the top part of the construction. Like I said, a lot of people don't see this. This is before the insulation's blown. On the under half of the house here, the ceiling's been completed. So we've already got the ceiling stomped out. It's been picked up and brought over. But like I said, we just want to give you a, a kind of inside look on the on the roof system here. So John's over here. He's going to discuss, discuss it a little bit more here on the, the rafters and the roof system we use. So in Clayton, we use an engineered truss system. And what you see here is a traditional wind zone one uh, engineered roof truss system. If you, if you look, you can see where we glued all the way down the rafters to our half inch sheetrock. And you can see our, our rafters on this one are spaced 24 inches, which is wind zone one. Wind zone two we, uh, is still 24 inch on center, but a few of them kind of get a little bit closer, some 16s. And then on wind zone three, we go all the way to, to uh, 16 inch on center rafters. As we move down this way, we also want to give you a look at something you don't traditionally get to see, which is a dormer that's not completed yet. This is just started. This is the dormer kit. They just started installing this on the house. And this is kind of behind the scenes, the skeletal look of it. Uh, Blake was talking about the insulation. You see these little pieces of paper in here. And if Clay will push back here, you can see there's measurements. And what that is is so that when they blow the cellulose insulation in there, it will show you how deep to go. Then he comes back in afterwards and he breaks that down and then blows it again to get to that, that inch level that for that particular house, for that particular insulation R value. We do use formaldehyde-free blown insulation. Blake, you want to talk about the windows real quick? Right, yeah. If you look here to the left, you can see John's pointed out there. You can see all the wood. This is a 60 by 30 window. It's in a kitchen here. And you can see the double two by fours on the side there. That's going to provide that support long term to keep the window uh, steady and sturdy there. You can also see the double two by four on the top right here around that. Um, and we've shown you before, but down beside that, you can see the sliding glass door and how Look at all the wood that's going to provide that structure and keep that uh, sliding glass door in place. You know, long once the house is set, that's going to provide a support for that long over time. There, John also pointed out the two by six beam across the top there. Um, and if you look on this one as well down here above the front door, you can see that header there as well. So you can kind of get a good look at that. So, um, like I said, this is a uh, uh, pretty far in the process. We're about station eight. Uh, all the walls have been constructed, the roof's been put on. Uh, when the guys come back in the morning, when the team comes back in the morning, they'll start blowing all the insulation in this one. It'll start moving down, it'll start in the roof decking area, and we'll show that in a, in a future video. Thank you. As we finish up the roofing system, here you can see the hardy board fascia, that's a Savannah standard. You can also see the metal drip rail there that keeps the water deflected from going inside the house here. Here you can see the underlayment that is laid, and then the shingles will be installed on top of this in the upcoming steps of the process. Once again, you can see that drip rail there that defers the water from coming inside there. We hope you've enjoyed this segment and looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.